KG Subramanian is one of the most exciting artists on the Indian art scene today. His paintings, so magnificently visceral and sensuously visual, celebrate both life and art. They combine the gravity of creation with the pleasure of play. For anyone else on the threshold of 90, this would be a remarkable claim to make, but not so with Subramanian. He is definitely the most versatile artist of his generation. Subramanian was born in 1924 in a Tamil Brahmin family at Kudu Parambu in North Kerala. The Tamil Brahmin settlers of Kerala, or Palghat Brahmins as they were popularly referred to, had marked cultural interest, especially in music. Thus, although a borderline community, they commanded a place of their own in the large social life and cultural fabric of Kerala which in itself was conglomerate of several communities and cultural strands. In the childhood, Subramanian was enthralled by the usual magic of the language of Kathakali and the gripping fantasies of the travelling theatre. Child Subramanian drew painting and made small laterite carvings and indulged in other artistic activities without harboring any ambition of becoming a professional artist. Years later, Binod Behari, his mentor at Shantiniketan, would write to him reminding him of the first work he did as an art student. Do you remember the first painting you did at Kalabhavan? That was Polychrome Curving. By the time Subramanian was 14, he began to gravitate towards Gandhian orbit. He began to read Gandhi and spiritual leaders like Vivekananda and Ramakrishna. He also began to read Ravindranath Tagore in translation, and these readings served to stimulate his thinking. Subramanian had read Rabindranath and heard of Shantiniketan from Gopal Reddy. Congress leader and an ex-student of Shantiniketan, who had been with him in jail. I was studying in the university. Due to my involvement in certain kind of activism, I ended in jail. And all the government institutions shut their doors on me. Then I had a brother who was in the police department and so he found out that I had a deep desire to become an artist. And without asking me, he wrote to Nandalal Bose, Will you take this fellow who is trying to sort of run away from the house? Luckily for me, Nandalal Bose took me and brought me here. Then I thought that sometimes things happen to you which give some shape to your own old wishes. Because even when I was in the school, I was always dreamt that the normal schools are no good. I do not want to go there. If there is any school I want to go to, that's what this man Rabindranath made at some place or other. Well, I was not fortunate enough to come and see him. Probably I was fortunate that I didn't see him. Because he was probably such an, such an impressive personality that in talking about his views, they all talk about him. When Subramanian reached Shantiniketan, Rabindranath was no more but his ideals were still alive in some measure. The educational program was liberal and open. It allowed each one to develop one's potential at his own pace 
and without the interference of rigid academic requirements. Subramanian writes, I heaved a sigh of relief when I reached here. And in Kalabhavan, Nandalal, Binod Behari and Ram Kinkar Bays, the three men who mattered were going full steam. Ashram Shai to Ami Jakun Pratham Ashi Ekani Oi Swami Ekan Kar Shab Our teachers Zera Mile Bodai Bombay Tombay Te Kichu Drama Kortu Kare Gichi To Ami Pratham Jakun Eschi To Akhun Oi Ama Dere Jo Kalava One Teen Boros Thambo that is Master Mashai, Binod Bihari, Ramkar, Edar Erai Teen Dan Chile. So, Amar Ehi Sujog Pee Chilo, Ki Aste Aste Ehi Oder Hathe Pohtta. Or Pratham Ekta Dutta Chobhi Ami Ya Kore Chhe, Master Mashai Jante Na Ami Chobhi Kore Te Pari, Jago Na Ami Aish Chhe Ekani. So, Unar Kub Bhaal Lage Chilo. उन्हें वो इतना तूले सवाई के देखी है चिन नेता और बोले चिन कि ये चले दूर देश तक ऐसे किंतु ये रखूँगा तो the beginning was good किंतु हमारे मोतन लो वो इतना एक दौरे ताकते पड़ी ना शेष रिदी के तो जकन काज करते करते तो आश्रम से के लाख तो ये चले एक तो बेशी ये दी के वो दी के जाते हैं रो एक बार तामी जा काज कर चला हूँ इतने देख के उन्हें के लगे चलो डेट आई एम गोइंग इन वेज विच ही डिडन्ट अप्रूव ऑफ तो अकन ताहली हो उन्हीं तो अकन कर दिने मास्टर मशहूर हो खूब बहुत रो चले तो बोले देखो आमर किच बोलर नहीं तुम्हीं बिनोद दर कच्चे जाओ तो तोकन थे कि बिनोदर संगे अमर संबंध जुटे गए लोग। तो इन ए सेंस इन दोस डेज व्हेन बाय सम रीज़न और दिया था ऐसे संगे एक ता जोगा जोग हवर सुजु पेच लम एंड दैट्स ए ग्रेट एडवांटेज तो आजकल और एक उम एक उन भावते मने हैं वो जो कम गुनी लोग and absolutely taken up with being a kind of a practitioner of art. All the time thinking about it, not about the market, not about the money. But then the whole question is, Master Masai to Master Masai, he was an unusual man. As he was a student, he was a student, he was a student, he was a student, he was a student. On the other hand, he sort of uh, looked after me like a parent. I to thik other motam baitali ke jetam na. Oi samay sabai baitali ke jeto. Classe jete jete poi deri hoye jeto. Tokon pori na class bondo. Kintu oi ratri bala portam tortam ije. To ek din oi rokam ekta ethe. एक ची सकाल बेला तो रोज़ दूर उठे चे किंतु आमी बिचारना या ची तो और रोज़ दूर ऐसे तो मुखे पड़े चे तो अकन देख लाम केवु वही जानला बंदो करे चले जाए तो मिले ये ने के तो ये रखो में टा और देख ची वो टा मास्टर मशहूर चले उन्हीं देखे न तो हमारे रोड़ ने वो नहीं कोनो अमावे बोकनी उकनी करें नहीं ये करें नहीं कोकोनो मेंशन करें नहीं but so that's it he was like a parent वो एक समय तो लाग लो कि आमी जबकन बोले चले कि आमी आर एक टब अच्छा थकी अन्ना तो थके उन्हीं तो खूब कायदा करे बोले चले तुम ही जो तो तो सीखते पर सब तो सीखे गए चो ऐकन तो बाहरे जगत ही तुम्हारे गुरु तो ये रकम बाहरे जगत ही भालो ये एड्रेस चिलो ना वाले आरेख बच्चर एक ने तो इम्नी पढ़े था तो। As a student in Shantini Ketan, Subramanian had spent much time observing his mentors at work, 
trying to figure out their conceptual underpinning, reading books on art, exploring ideas and expanding his critical horizon. He was never happy merely laboring at his works and perfecting his skills, craft and reveal it. Subramanian is an artist who is wonderfully articulate with words, a thinking artist who can talk meaningfully about his work. Now we are presenting his conversation with renowned art historian R. Shivakumar in Shantiniketan. Probably that attitude comes to me from Shantiniketan. I mean, although there has been various attempts at having a kind of public art or art related to architecture or sort of a public buildings, it was here that uh, some of the elder artists I have had a chance to work with, they wanted to put it as a, something that embellishes the thing that is and add to its personality and even beauty, whatever. Because these days beauty is not such a sort of a palatable word. I mean, when you think of it, I don't think that there are many murals which go with the buildings or which cover the building's whole or almost change the general look of the building as probably we have here. I mean, the Kalobadi, for instance. There isn't anything in the history of modern India, I mean, in public art, that took a project like that. It has even sort of, it is one of the projects which, uh, in which they have used sculptural collage. Mm -hmm. And a collage that probably spans uh, various countries and centuries. I mean, just. Now, all those things, I mean, in fact, put me into contact with thinking art and the relationship with architecture and the environment. True that um, as a student, I didn't do terribly much. In fact, there were lots of uh, mural projects at that time I was studying here. But uh, I didn't take part in any of them because they went along with a certain kind of an image I was not interested in. And they were small. And then the question of doing is under a mural like uh, on a wall, like sticking a postage stamp uh, on a sort of a postal cover, I, di I didn't like the idea at all. Though Nandaral was the one person who thought that murals should go in a sort of a pertinent way around the walls and they should define the walls and give them a certain character. But when in later in the day I had more uh, contacts with uh, a person like Binod Bihari who thought in terms of mural in a more expansive way, covering a whole ceiling or covering a whole ceiling and the side walls in two different ways. He was uh, probably wanting to do something here which is very individual, but which would probably sort of hold comparison with certain things done in Italy at one, at one time. Then, of course, when I had a chance in the la later in the day, working with him on the Hindi Barnum level, ah, it was a great experience. Then, we find that all the great arts of our country, whether in sculpture or painting, have a kind of a public presence. 
whether that presence is fully read by others or not, we are not quite sure. But then it has always excited people to see things together. I mean, there are very, very few countries in which a sort of a whole rock face has been curved into a temple with various kinds of inserts. It, um, rarely that you find a cave which has a kind of a colourful mural within, like uh, the colourful flesh within the body, and sculpture standing outside this. So you see, I mean, they all give you certain kind of ideas in which you think that you can make art grow out of what you see, I mean, out of what you build. Subramanian's mural celebrates the vivacity of nature at the obvious level, but viewed against the context of Shantiniketan murals at large, it is also subtly dialogic. The progressive greening of Shantiniketan, its transformation from a denuded land into a densely green landscape, is one of the experiences offered by the murals of Nandalal and Binod Behari. Seen alongside these murals, Subramanian's sand-cast cement mural sketches their distant prehistory which the black and white mural paints both to its culmination and to a possible future scenario that could emerge with the spot in constructional activities all around Shantiniketan. In uh, more recent years, I mean, in fact, between 1988 and now we have done a number of murals in Shantiniketan, I mean, which uh, uh, has been very important uh, murals and um, the first of this was the sand cast cement mural again which you did here which shaped somewhat like a I mean wayside shrine <laughs> and uh, with various goddesses on it and um, but at the same time it seems to have various references to folk tales and beliefs and uh, to Bengal history in general right. um, it has an iconic form uh, yet, it seems to have some kind of narration embedded in it. Uh, will you kind of explain this? Well, really, when I did that mural, which is still there, yeah. luckily, yeah. most of it in good shape. Yeah. I was at that time uh, looking through various books in the library. Uh, and there was sort of a small book, not uh, uh, an extremely learned book, but about the various uh, stories around artworks, Indian artworks, folk art especially. So there I read that in one of those uh, folk uh, observances that women have, They sort of dig a small place, which is like a sort of hold water. Then a sort of a have a crocodile and a turtle and this thing. Then put a stick in and put a bird on top. So the the notion behind you are saying that it is because at one time Bengal was not land, but it was a swamp. There was more water than earth. Mm -hmm. So then a bird came and dropped a seed and it grew into a sort of... Earth. Then it sat on it, it dropped more seeds and then the whole place grew up. To show that it was uh, not land but water, so they showed the crocodile and the turtle and things of that sort. And the bird sort of made it into land slowly. And peculiarly, I found that uh, some of the deities which are commonly popular in mm -hmm. Bengal, mm -hmm. they have some reference to water. Mm -hmm. One is Kamalekamani, yeah, yeah. it's a sort of reference to water. water. 
then if you think it of manasa manasa also is sailing mm -hmm. almost in a boat okay. you come it like then comes uh, goddess durga yeah. who rides on a tiger yeah. which is a land based That's thing amazing. so it is a kind of a so transition so from water yeah. to land kind of. so that is why i thought so this should be kind of a symbol of the creation mm -hmm. of bengal and yeah. its tribe so i do not want it to be too clearly yeah. mm -hmm. sort of told as a story but that has a kind of a creation myth mm -hmm. kind of it uh, this is also one of the i mean advantages or uh, mm. i mean probably the ways a public sculpture or ah, art that should <laughs> work because it's not for the artist to tell the whole story but ah. uh, i mean do something that exist Uh, not only in a public space but also in some kind of a public memory or mind right, right. so various things which are around uh, in that society comes up it lit, mm. lights up the mural or uh, the work uh, right and um, in fact the next work you did was this black and white mural mm. uh, which is not one single work but a series of murals mm. done between 1990 and uh, to 2009 because first uh, work piece of work you did was in uh, 1990 i think and uh, you had covered almost half the building then 3 years later you reworked and uh, covered the entire uh, kind of building and uh, then after some time i mean uh, as uh, you had consciously chosen a kind of impermanent material mm. so as a result I mean, uh, when it kind of faded away, you decided to mm. redo a, the whole thing, scrap down the old mural, and do a new one in the same material, the same kind of thing. So, in in a way, you have kind of um, inbuilt into it some impermanence and a possibility for renewal. I mean, That's this was right. in fact really <laughs> the end. That if you are thinking in terms of There is somewhere I don't uh, exactly remember where a poem by D. S. Lawrence, mm -hmm. where he says a work of art <coughs> should uh, grow up and disappear like the lilies in the field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That should come up and glow, and then go away. Then another will come up and glow. And mm -hmm. go That is one thing. Probably this happens very often. because the reference of a work with um, Rabindran Tagore also at once of thought is not so terribly permanent it passes with time the other thing that um, yeah, came from a visit from an american artist who had worked in cuba here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he came here with the set of uh, cuban posters which we exhibited in the air then i said what are you going to do he said i'm going round in fact when i came from uh calcutta to here i found lots of graffiti on the mm -hmm. wall and they looked interesting that was the time when all over america people were talking of graffiti i mean things on the wall which would probably make the walls livelier than they are <laughs> of course the graffiti here were mostly election posters they had all these also. then he also found that the the marks of um, Kaudan gutes yes, on the wall also made a very interesting yeah, texture. Yeah, yeah. I had all the time noted this that these uh, election posters though they are done by impermanent material mm -hmm. they last long enough. I mean it's not easy to rub them out. Mm -hmm. So I thought why don't I do a mural here? Yeah. and my main interest that i wanted to do a mural in black and white at this corner building mm -hmm. so that people have 
who have often said that the buildings in Kalabuan are so ordinary looking, mm -hmm. the environment is not. So I said at least you should put something which will okay. sort of take the, the, ah, the mind away and say that this is something spectacular. Mm -hmm. It just stands out of the building. And that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And as you all know, we didn't have any money. Yeah. So we used very little money yeah. and did that thing. Yeah, it's slam black and mm, uh, yes. Mm. After, of course, ten, twelve years, mm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then, when you do murals of that kind, there is no point repairing them. Yeah. It is always start a new one. Um. There, at the back of the mind, was this: that what is permanent in art? The whole question is. The other day we had a sort of a seminar on E.B. Havel. He was a very mixed man. He had all kinds of interesting things to say and all kinds of things which you could dispute. But somewhere in one of his uh, writings or essays, he says, it is true I am a great admirer of Indian architecture, a thing like Taj Mahal and things of that kind. But what I am more interested in is the Taj Mahal can go to pieces, but I want um, somebody someday. who can build a Taj Mahal again. Yeah. So this is the thing. Mm. Living artists are more essential mm, than, than uh, living art. Okay. I mean, murals by their sheer scale require some amount of planning. Mm. I mean, when you want to do such a large work. and um, But in your case, in all those large murals you did, there has been some amount of improvisation, mm. which was, I think, quite essential to your way of working. And um, there has been more of this improvisation in this one. I mean, you did a little model, I know that. <laughs> but when you really began to paint, mm. there was so much of improvisation. And in fact, when you redid this mural in, mm. I mean, two years ago, uh, I think you almost worked without any model, straight right. onto the wall. Normally, murals have these two stages of planning and then mm. execution. But in your case, and especially this one, there was almost, uh, that was erased. Uh, That's right. Yeah. It was almost like drawing on the mm. wall directly. And um, uh, But then the mural also becomes, in a sense, an outcome of shifting impulses because mm. you are not planning, mm. in a sense. Really, ah, uh, that uh, amount is there, yeah. certainly. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing. So. Uh, it's a great advantage yeah. to have something to go by oh, yeah. and something you can add on. No, yeah. It's um, like um, in many of our songs, folk yeah, songs and all, there is a form already yeah. there. Yeah, so you don't have to do anything with it, but mm -hmm. you can add on to it yeah, yeah. and then mm -hmm. it becomes. Mm -hmm. Now, when I did the first mural, my idea was on one side we will put a mural and make it stand out of the mm -hmm. yeah, because you have a colorful surrounding. Yeah, so, if I made a colorful mural, it will mm -hmm. sort of sink into the right, surrounding. Okay. So, I wanted to be it in black and white like a sort of a negative mm -hmm. sort of a. Stop. Photographic yeah. negative, so that it will stand yeah, sharp right. and it will glow in light, mm -hmm. it's kind of. Then when I thought in terms <coughs> of the A, I was trying to, one of the basic things in was that the mere pedestrian kind of architecture, it goes on, in fact, how can I sort of make this architecture like it's like clothing yourself? An odd looking man like me puts on no, 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 a good cloak, no, no, no. which will sort of. So I wanted the things that it is cloaked on should have reference to various yes, things yes. in it, mm -hmm. the activity around. Mm -hmm. Then, while doing the front wall and did those things which are relating to this side of the thing. There was one of our, um, uh, yeah, I think he was my gardener. He used to pass by this way to his home. <laughs> so he said, Babu, he can act a Devi Karen. 
Then at that time, of course, I was also thinking in terms of some kind of a figure which shows a kind of a conflict between, let us say, unpleasant and the pleasant, sort of a good and evil, or whatever you call it. How do you sort of a resolve this conflict? So I thought in terms of having a sort of a beastly kind of influence on one side, and, and on the other, a Devi who rides on a beast, but fights with flowers, yes, kind of. That is how the whole thing, Thank but it got rubbed away in 12 yes, years. Yes. Whenever I start some work, Vishwabharati is always is in distress. Mm -hmm. At the time I was doing, mm -hmm. there was here and there little things related to that. That is, when I first came here, and we moved into the Avagad bungalow, People used to give us flowers in the morning and put it in the air. Mm -hmm. Then a goat used to come and eat it away. Mm -hmm. So it looked like Vishabharati was a garden which so many goats are eating away. Mm -hmm. At that time it became a symbol of that mm -hmm. kind of... I had done a series like of works on that. But this time also when I started this mural, redoing it, everyone was saying, Vishwabharati ki hove. Yeah. So, so, Vishwabharati ki So, then I thought, ki hove mane hoita, it is like, you want a Hanuman to bring yeah. Mrita Sanjeevani yeah. from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> or you want a Vishnu to come and sort of a, save the big, uh, sort of elephant of Vishwabharati from the crocodile. Yeah. So, Vishwabharati's main trouble then is Jaler Kumirir Vita. So, even an elephant cannot be same. So, the whole question is, there is a certain reference to the crisis we are in. Well, maybe many of you don't think it is a crisis. But for people who think in terms of a Vishwabharati that Tagore thought about, there is a real crisis. There is something, it's not falling down, it is something we are not doing. Yeah. So I thought, there, here and there, I'll put some reference yes, to it. But it's not the main theme of the mural. Right. The main theme of the mural is this, that an ordinary looking surrounding look, looks yeah. bright and nice. Yeah. In fact, there is, uh, in, I mean, I suppose this is also what is the best public Mm. Uh, art always does this. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this case, definitely there's a, I mean, dialogue in uh, two levels. One is the dialogue that you have as an artist, mm. I mean, mm. drawing onto a wall with mm. some ideas, mm. and then the others being coming up in dialogue with the wall mm. as you work. Mm. This dialogue of the working yeah. hand and the wall. That's right. And the other is the dialogue of the individual and the environment in yeah. which uh, the work takes place. So it's uh, this two-way dialogue which probably animates mm. uh, works like this. Okay. Was this all somewhat planned out or things that happened no, spontaneously? No, it was not planned out at all. Yeah, it happens more spontaneously. Really speaking, in the beginning, <laughs> yeah, since I had worked over the walls, as far as the general design goes, a lot of it is uh, predetermined uh, by the doors and windows. Mm. The only thing is that this time I did it, I made use of the doors and windows. Mm -hmm. The front doors are like sort of a flying object mm -hmm. that can take. Yeah. If somebody looks out of yeah, the window, yeah. it should be probably part of a yeah. pushback. Yeah. Yeah. And the side uh, window is like a sort of an opening in a chariot, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. So, those are all things which have come mm -hmm. quite naturally from mm -hmm. the... Mm -hmm physicality of the, the architecture, architecture itself. itself yeah. But the other inputs are various, I mean, after all. Yeah. The, and uh, there are some things of the, uh, the real conflict 
of um, the oddness of uh, you find uh, a crocodile or a mm -hmm. frog trying to chase yes, a sir. sort of a fly yes, and things of that kind, which uh, is doesn't imply, I mean, it's not strictly trying to sort of make a moral out of it, but uh, just to, there is this kind of a thing happen. Um, well, this is something you touched upon, but uh, in most traditional mm. uh, kind of uh, practices where art has been an embellishment on buildings, mm and um, where painting and sculpture seem to exist alongside architecture. Um, but this is um, not the case with modern art. A lot of mm. modern art, I mean, as you suggested, where all these arts exist separately. Uh, but in your work, this kind of interaction has taken place, but it has not always been on the same level. It has mm. always been this relationship has been that shifting from one mural to the other. Uh, can you kind of tell about that a little bit? Well, mm. in fact, when you think in terms of mural with a certain kind of reference, but for that matter, all artwork with a kind of a public reference. Mm -hmm. Now, these days, uh, <coughs> It is very common for us to think in terms of public reference because there are very many problems that each individual is unable mm -hmm. to solve. Because we have sold ourselves to the group and then that group is not controlled by the individual vision itself. Mm -hmm. That is partly because of the growth of the system and partly because of our own indifference to start with. So we always talk in terms of a public sphere. I mean everything is a sort of a private thing, we are only looking after ourselves, but then when it comes to common questions, we think in terms of a public sphere. But when does a sphere become a sphere, unless it goes on churning, I mean there is no sphere. We may sit together and raise a few slogans, mm -hmm. but there is no sphere. Sure. But you have to make it a sort of a round activity, then it becomes a sphere. Mm. So, on one side, that is there. On another side, I mean, from the time of the, I think, the old depression, people have been sort of a painting murals on walls, which have a message whether a sort of a radical message oh, or a message somewhere. Now, the question is that putting a message on the wall does not necessarily relate to the architecture. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But when the earlier the artists were trying to celebrate a religion did this, their message became almost an integral part of the whole statement. It is not uh, just shouting out no, messages, no, no, no. but it was trying to also penetrating you in various ingenious ways. So really, if I am wanting to do something, I would like to do there, I mean, in that kind of a thing, rather than too loud, demonstrative kind of way. The message should seep in. The message should come into your mind almost invisibly, though you are using visible means, this kind of a thing. Well, but of course, I mean, each artist is not made the same way. So, each artist has to make his own choice. Another your very recent mural, um, you have just completed it and um, in this you have chosen an entirely different medium, I mean um, painted stoneware tiles mm. uh, assembled into an around a building. And I think. So this has uh, obviously a certain amount of planning which goes into it 
beforehand. And then when you set it around, of course, uh, there is a lot of improvisation that comes in. Now, almost an equal measure, planning and mm. improvisation. And um, this was uh, an entirely new medium that you're working in. Uh, so, I mean, partly offsetting that uh, impermanence of the earlier work, I mean, the previous mm. mural. And, but it's also a kind of different kind of imagery that you have brought into this mural. True. The, in fact, uh, when somebody suggested to me to do a mural on this, uh, yeah, then I was wondering what I can do with it. Because I know that the memory of Master Masai is very dear to us. He is, after all, the heart of this institution. It is also, so I have to do something there which has some reference to his ideas. And uh, I also do something there. <coughs> which uh, sort of takes it forward a little. In fact, there is a certain kind of a thing which is also related to my notion about what an institution or tradition should be. A tradition is not a tradition if it stagnates yeah. and is like a little pool at your feet. Mm. A tradition is a tradition only when it lives through, but certain of the basic ideas that gave it birth are kept alive in new circumstances. This kind. So I thought that what I should do here should have some reference to, I mean, it should have the color of a Govarmati building. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the fine things that you see in our villages mm. are where people on the Govarmati walls do those white decorations yes. of various mm. kinds. But of course, if I do anything like that here, it will look like a building from either Bengal mm. or Orissan yes, village. Yes. I mean, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted that the figures will not show the the impermanence of living Living things, things. <laughs> but the permanence of growing the things, things, I mean, which mm. grow upward, mm. like the tree. And so the main f figures will be trees and textures. And in between, certain things that uh, the masters have said about art and things like mm. that. It was fun playing around together with some type of graphic textures and these things. And luckily for us, we found this factory. Yeah. What is it called? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. For a ceramic factory. Yeah. But anyway, the whole question is, because they had the kind of tile we needed, mm -hmm. and they gave us the permission to work over it. Mm -hmm. And it was great fun. Of course, it's not the physical work is not my yeah. hand, only the planning is. Yes. Um, this, this whole play between representation and abstraction, mm. Mm. between uh, uh, decoration and um, kind of a narrative uh, thing, has also been part of your work, but in a sense it has uh, been a part of Nandalal's mm. approach to things. So this very flexible negotiation between these different things. Quite. In fact, um, Nandral being the probably, every time we are trying to interpret um, the kind of uh, the ideas we have in terms of what you have around, I still think that uh, in his time, Nandalal was one person who he, who he did not uh, write manifestos or mm -hmm. big treatises mm -hmm. who understood the crux of the problem. Mm -hmm. An art uh, that has 
a certain kind of a silent permanence, but also he is vocal in its own way. It also reflects what is going around the world and it also refines the world, this kind of a thing. If uh, I can even do a little bit of that in my work or whatever I do, I'll be very happy. Mm. And um, I do not want to sort of uh, say anything very spectacular, but whatever he said should probably creep, it in, creep into the onlooker, uh, to the viewer, in a way that it affects him and at least lets him say, ah, it's yeah. something, mm. kind of a thing. A kind of a, a breath of air yeah. which touches you yeah. and sort of awakens you. Compassion is a value that Subramanian admires in art. Without it, he believes an artist or writer is only mart. As a consummate virtuoso and versatile artist himself, it is not that Subramanian does not value craft, but this, he believes, should go with wisdom rather than cleverness, which is only called efficiency. In Subramanian, wisdom is evident everywhere. But he is too urban and sensitive to wear his empathy on his sleeve and prefer to hide it behind a sardonic mask. For all the opening up, the rapture of the self into art that we see in his recent walk, he still unveils by illusion, not confession. Thank <laughs> you. 